This is Adam Humphreys and it's time to go over UV mapping. First we need an object to UV map here. Um, I think we'll just start with a cube for now. Something simple enough. And uh, before you can start UV mapping anything, you gotta make your object edible. Okay, now let's go to the UV layout. You can go to body paint UV. In my case, I go to Cam Studio Capture UV. We got our cube here. We got our cube selected. <coughs> if we look over here, then we notice there's nothing there. And you click on uh, polygons or points here. No oh, polygons. Actually, see it. And actually, we're zoomed in at 100%. We zoom out so we can actually see. And this navigates the same way with the Alt Middle Click to move around. And the scroll wheel to zoom in and out, or Alt Right Click to zoom in and out. So it works more or less the same way. Get your points and get your polygons. In a way, uh, a lot of people get uh, discouraged with UV mapping. They don't like it. Um, be honest, it's really, it's really just modeling. Except you're modeling in 2D, and you already have your geometry, your points and polygons are already there. So it's kind of, kind of modeling, kind of like modeling in 2D. It's really not too difficult. <coughs> now, first we hit Control A. What we did was just select every polygon there. Go to UV mapping. There's quite a few options to choose from. Projection. This is how your texture is projected onto your object. And since we're in the UV editing mode here, we can determine how that looks. So if we click on sphere, it'll arrange all these points and polygons as a sphere. And it does that according to the axis we have on our cube. So if we go back into standard mode here, <coughs> we look at our axis, oh excuse me, the Y axis. It looks at it as if it was a sphere. This is the top, this is the bottom, and it does that according to the y-axis here. I'll show you what happens when we change that axis later. <coughs> but for right now, let's take a look at these. Okay, sphere, cylind cylinder, won't look too much different, except it goes fully to the top to the bottom. If we actually select here, we can see what it's doing. There's first one, second one, third and fourth, and then the, the tops are actually right on top there. So, and we're selecting things just like we would select things in here when we're modeling or selecting points and polygons the same way. And uh, if you're actually getting into detail work again, you can click and use the scroll wheel to adjust the size of, of your selection here if you're getting into detailed, intricate work. Or again, we can go to the rectangular selection tool, just the same. <coughs> okay, let's go back to project. All right. Frontal. Frontal is exactly what you're seeing in the viewport. <coughs> and notice if your viewport is skewed like that, that it will take that in consideration. So if you would if you try to if you're gonna use frontal, usually use frontal with parts so you can get something in a position where you can actually work with it. Where you can actually work with it. So try to square that up. And there's flat, which is more or less what you would normally get. Cubic. Oh, oh, excuse me. No, I don't have to select cubic. Cubic two. That's pretty good. I, I usually um, box works pretty well. As you see, there's no real difference here. More or less, I'm doing it the same way. Then shrink. Shrink's fairly, uh, fairly odd. I, I should probably use a different object to demonstrate that, and I probably will eventually. For right now, we go with box. We see that's what it does. Um, it, it takes it like as if it was a cube, <coughs> and it is a cube. So it takes these along here and breaks it up into pieces as if it were a box. Now I want to show <coughs> exactly what happens when we actually take these. We can either move the axis or we can actually move the polygons themselves in this space. You know, rotate. We're going to rotate this a little bit. I'm going to hold down on shift to quantize that rotation. Okay, we've rotated it. Now, I want, to, I want to show you how these uh, these tools react, how differently they react. Okay, sphere. Oops, oh, we got to get on there. All right, here we go. There we go. Go on the tool. All right. I, go, I arranged it as it would as, as it would as if it was looking at a sphere. 
notice there's still some issues there. We would want to <coughs> hit the E button, which is the move. We would want, we would want to move that, go into the points, and take that point, and then hit the E button again and move that over here. And we would want to bring that uh, polygon back down. And we, we would want to snap that to it. And I'll get to that eventually, but first I'm going over the projection styles here. <coughs> Excuse me. Still getting over that sinus infection. Alright. Now, cylindrical. More or less the same, because it's a sphere. And frontal. Of course, we know what frontal is. Flat. Cubic. Cubic 2. Okay. Now, here, here's what's being different down here. Here's what's being done differently. Box. It's doing the same thing it was before. It's taking the sides. Like here's the side. And there's the side. And there's the side. And it does it based on the angle. So this is the top and this is the bottom. So if we actually rotated this a little bit differently, if we rotated it this way a little bit more, then this would end up being the bottom. So this would end up being here. <coughs> it just, I mean, this is, these are just tools to help you kind of lay something out. So you could um, keep your object in place. Oops. So if we actually if say we um, extrude this here, we say this is like an arm or so, and oops. And then we didn't want to actually go through the trouble of of getting it all nice and round. We would just want to mess. We just want. We just want this like a cylinder. It's more or less like a cylinder, but it's at an angle. So if we did it like that, leaving the axis as is, <coughs> we got a cylinder. Excuse me. There, we got a cylinder. It's this is not what we wanted at all. So if we go back to standard, rotate this axis. And then go to cylinder. Ah, that's what we want. Cause it took, look at, looked at it as a cylinder, but now it's, it was laying on its side. So now we, excuse me, E move. So now we have what we want. We got this side here. The next side. The next side. And this side. And then there's the top. Mm. And of course, it's funny. You have to rearrange that. We're going to go over that a little bit later. We're just going over the projections here. So, or if we wanted to do this as a box, do it as a box and it would break it up as if it were a box. Oops. There's one side. There's another side. And see, it just kind of estimated try to guess which one which one was which and then there's the, the top so it did it like a box so many sides and it just broke it up <coughs> so uh, that's uh, that pretty much covers the projections you have to mess around with that but usually you use it in parts to get what you need <coughs>